Hi, welcome to the Online Jewelry Academy. I'm Professor John R. and I'm your instructor. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create granulation effects on sterling silver. Now, in a previous video, I showed you how to prepare the balls for granulation by cutting wire to a specific length and preparing a charcoal block so that you could create perfectly round spheres. In this video, I'll show you how to apply them to your work. Now, if we look over here, I can show you the basic patterns that most jewelers use for granulation. And believe me, these patterns have been around for thousands of years. Most jewelers will use either a little he hexagon shape or rose shape, or they may use a border, which is just small pyramids, or a larger pyramid, or a double-ended pyramid that's like a diamond. And you can see these over here. I've laid out the granulation balls in the same patterns. And like I said, these are the standard shapes that jewelers have been using for years, but you can feel free to create whatever patterns you want to on your jewelry. Now, the things that you're going to need to effectively work with your granulation balls are your torch, you're gonna to need a pair of tweezers, you should have a soldering pick handy. You'll need your flux with a flux brush. And you're going to need somewhere where you can fire the work. Here I have my compressed hardened charcoal block sitting on a small piece of kiln shelf. And I have it next to a ventilation system that's going to escape all of the bad fumes that could come, come off of this piece. Now, in addition to this, I suggest using eye protection. You never know, and it's good to protect your, your two eyes. All right, so let me reveal the secret of this right away. The secret to success with this is pre-paint your flux onto your piece, or the base piece, and allow it to dry. Another thing I want to mention is that if you're having trouble keeping the little balls in place, you can cheat a little bit and add just a touch of flux to the bottom of them to hold them in place, but you do need to dry that flux out before you begin. You can actually preheat the piece if you want to. Okay, so now that you've got that established, the rest is really easy. This is just a fusing operation. Now you notice that I have the piece laying on a flat surface. So if you don't have a flat surface on your charcoal block, you may want to check out our other video on resurfacing your charcoal block. The flatness of the block is important because we don't want the piece slumping or moving or bending out of shape as we fuse the balls onto it. The goal is to have a flat surface where there's a ball sitting on top of it that's fused with a tangential connection. That means it just connects in one spot. Okay, so I've already pre-painted the flux onto this little piece here. Now all I need to do is grab some of the balls and create a pattern with it. So I'm just going to start moving them over one by one. Okay, I've laid out a pattern on my piece. Now if you look at this, you can see I put a lot of the balls down. You don't have to put so many down at one time like I did. The reason why I do this is just to try to avoid fire scale or unnecessary oxidation. The other thing that I want to mention at this point too is you'll notice that I just put a little curve of balls to create a border. Well, if this is too, proves to be too difficult for you, one of the things that you can do is you could substitute with something called bead wire. And I laid out a little piece right here and created a border right next to it with the uh, granulation balls. And you can see that the bead wire, which by the way does come in various sizes, it approximates the look of what a granulation border would look like. Assuming that you've done everything and you're prepared and you're ready to start firing, let me show you how to do it. The most important thing is to just watch what you're doing so that you don't overexpose any one area to heat, causing either reticulation or melting. All right, so I'm going to light my torch. The first thing that I want to do is take the tip of the flame and just draw around the piece itself with the flame. And what this does is it ignites the charcoal around the piece, which sort of adds a little bit of heat to the piece from the outside. So it's just a reflective heat. 
Notice I'm not wanting to expose the piece itself to the heat, which would cause oxidation to start to form. Now I'm going to switch hands with the torch, and I'm going to pick up my solder pick. All right, and I'm going to keep this going around for just a little bit. When you're ready, you can apply the heat directly to the top of the piece as well. Now remember, have a good flame position. Now, in order to fuse the piece, you have to bring it past that temperature of annealing up to the level where it's just on the verge of melting. And you'll definitely begin to see an orange glow. And like I said, if things don't work out the first time, don't worry about it. You can always go back and fill in. So notice I'm keeping the heat moving, and I've got like a nice bright orange color developing on the surface of the metal. That tells me that we're getting close to a fusing point. And what you'll see is a little bit of glossiness on the surface of the balls as they start to stick to the bottom plate. So these seem to be fused. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so I'm going to let that cool down just a little bit but I do want to move it so it doesn't stick to the block. There we go. So while that's cooling down before I quench it, just want to tell you that this is something that is going to require a great deal of patience and practice. This is where you're really going to see if you're passionate about being a jeweler because it will take you time to position everything. And like I said, this will require practicing to make sure that you get it absolutely right. Now, it isn't for every project, but it should be fun to play with. Okay, so now it's cooled off a little bit. Let's, let me quench it and see how well I did. Okay. I'll just put it back on the block over here. And look at that. Every single one of my little balls stayed in place. I hope you have fun with granulation. If you like this video, the OJA could use your support. Just click on the little letter I in the upper right hand corner and a menu will drop down showing you related videos. Scroll all the way to the bottom and click on the picture of my face and a new window will open up. That will allow you to select a level of support. You can choose to leave one, five, or one million dollars. But whatever level of support you choose to give us, We'd appreciate it if you'd click on the blue letters that say, leave a comment and be recognized. That way we'll know who to thank. Next, hit the next button and fill out your credit card information. We appreciate the support of all of our viewers. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, you can do it right now. Thanks for watching.